Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from RazorEmporium.com coming at you today for another shave review video. We are looking at the Velocity One from Tatalus and we're gonna be using the Barbershop Soap from Razor Emporium. Let's get started. Okay, we are gonna start right here because I've got a lot to say about this razor. <laughs> um, you may or may not have known there is a new razor on the scene that is making waves uh, in the razor community and that's because of its price. <laughs> you know, um, I thought when we came out with the Rex Ambassador um, in 2017 and we priced it at $249 I thought I was gonna get a lot of hate <laughs> but that has been eclipsed by the amount of hate that this razor is getting and I think it is ridiculous not the price I think it the hate but we're, we'll get into that um, the Velocity One the brand name is Tatalus Mr. Manuel went to Barcelona, Spain for a Formula One race experience and it blew him away. And he, he just fell in love with the high performance, high precision, fast, you know, car, high end engines, all this kind of stuff. And he made a, a razor. Let's talk about unpacking the, this thing. So you're going to start off with this beautiful, handsome cardboard box just to protect presentation box. We'll put this over here. And this is a very nice material as well. This has been foil stamped. This is some thick chipboard. This box alone is worth some money, I can tell you, for doing packaging. Once you take this off, you are greeted by a product pass. We're not, we're, we haven't even got the razor yet. This is the literally the quality and material and it feels exactly like a passport. It's the same size. And the pages have that waxy, high-end feel. There's like five different languages here of how to use this razor. All these different, you know, languages for the most of the world popular languages here. And you get the certificate of authenticity. And this is just by the way, I got this package yesterday. I opened it to take a single photo, which I then put on a Facebook group and it got 150 comments. And now I'm opening it for the second time. I haven't used the razor. I haven't gone much past this, this process. I didn't even look at what my serial number is. Uh, my serial number is number 12. And that's another point here. This razor is $884. With the stand, it's $1,049 US. I bought it with my own money. I got the receipt. Show you. Bought it with my own money and um, it was not given to me for review, and I'm number 12. There are only 100 of these razors made. So talk about exclusive. But this certificate of authenticity talks about the model number, the material is 316L stainless, the length is 98 millimeters, width is 45 millimeters, height, uh, sorry, weight is 112 grams. I was told it has a 0.89 millimeter blade gap. Um, comes with the stand. This is gorgeous. Then there's whatever this is. I don't know what this is, but it's really cool. It's like a little tag, a little purple tag that's custom made for them uh, that says genuine, original, authentic. Then there is a international lifetime warranty, which comes in the form of a credit card. Literally looks like a credit card, same material as a credit card. And it has your serial number on it and a thank you warranty card. Then you have a polishing cloth. It looks like a microfiber. It doesn't look like what we use. It has like a rouge in bed. It looks just like a microfiber, which is fine. It's really just going to get water stains off. It's not going to really do any actual polishing. Then there's another piece of material 
that tells you that it's um, how beautiful and functional it is. And this is a waxy paper. I can feel that. And then we're finally down to the presentation. All of that. Okay, we're going to pull the stand out first. Stand is perfectly packed in here. The stand, I opted to get the stand. It's got a laser engraved logo. It's brush finished on the perimeter and then it's mirror finished on top. Super nice looking. It's got some kind of rubber base so that it's not gonna leave a mark on your counter. So we'll put that here. And then we actually can get into the razor. And now I'm holding the $884 razor. It's made of 316L. This is made in Switzerland. CNC, uh, multi-axis mill machine. Uh, polished, and I, I, I like to think I like to see this. That almost the entire industry has gone to the way I've done the Rex stands with a pin and a receiving hole. That's something I was the first to do, and now everyone else is doing it. But that's cool. Um, look at that. Take a look at that. That's a thousand and forty-nine dollars sitting on the counter. This is by far the most expensive modern razor I've ever seen or heard of and certainly now own. Um, and I bought this really to do this video. I'm not even joking. I bought this razor to do the video to show you guys because I, I love doing these review videos and I love bringing new things to you guys. And um, I saw someone else commenting about this and how ridiculous it was and how could anyone spend that much money on a razor and I was like, I, I love where there's smoke, there's fire. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to buy it. Let's just do this. Um, that it's, it's quite impressive. I mean, you can't knock this over. It reminds me a lot of the Rex and the fact that you can't knock this over. It is impressive. There is a really cool blend of polished and, and satin. So like the top has this long, nice streak of, of brush finish. And then we have polished on the sides. We have the laser engraving on the top cap. Super nice. And again, he's inspired by race cars. He's inspired by high-end Formula One engines, and I really dig this this mix of uh, brushed and polished look. It's I, I won't lie, I'm 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 quite impressed. And as someone who does, we do metal finishing all day, every day in our shop. It is actually hard to achieve stuff like this because you have to do masking. Uh, if you if you, you you may think, oh, it's just easy. Oh, they brush this and polish that. You're going to get bleeding occurring. So you actually have to do masking of different parts uh, in between steps. Um, each one has a serial number, again, laser engraved into the guard, which I think is super cool that's on the inside at the bottom. The inside of the cap looks pretty much pretty typical for most razors, uh, where it's not, it's, it's getting inside these little areas, guys, with polishing wheels never looks good. If you get a little Dremel polishing wheel in here, it, it first off will create little ruts because of a small wheel and you're never going to get in between these little tiny areas the same way as you can a big flat surface like this. And so it'll never look good. So he did the right thing and left it kind of like a, a machine. Maybe it's been a, a tumbled, maybe a little bit of brush finishing or something in here. But it looks great. That's what I would have done. So let's load a blade and get started. So we're going to use a Permasharp blade today. It does come with, I think, a feather. Ugh, let's just pull this out. Yeah, it comes with feather blades. Um, I'm not a fan of feather. And I'm not reviewing feather blades today. I'm reviewing this and uh, my blade of choice and what I'm most familiar with is Permasharp. And so we're going to do that. I think it's ridiculous to think that you should use whatever comes with a razor and, and judge a razor based off of that. That's judging the blade. Blade makes such a big difference in your shave, guys. So we're going to load it this way that it shows in the, in the directions here and also the way that King Gillette showed us 120 years ago. We're going to put cap down, blade on top, guard on top handle, sandwich it all together. And I also noticed he did the same thing we've done with the Envoy. He has the, the neck of the handle go and countersink into the guard. So another little uh, stylistic design he got from us, which truth be told, I got it from Shane from Blackland. Thanks, Shane. Uh, all right, let's re-lather, rehydrate so we're not judging based off a, a dry lather. I'm going to get some good amount of water here. And when you're re-lathering, you're really just trying to get water reintroduced into this because the soap will sit there and dry up and cake up. We really need the water part. So I'm kind of going specifically with a wet lather over this other lather 
and trying to kind of blend them together and get back to that nice creamy state that I was at before I started talking for 10 minutes, which we are doing. So I'm going to try to talk as much as possible because I have a lot to say about this razor. First off, the packaging alone, guys, I can tell you there's minimum $100 in that packaging. Not, I'm not exaggerating. I know what things like that cost. When we did the Rex packaging, I went down all the rabbit holes and talked to all the vendors and, you know, had samples made and pricing. And um, had we not done some of those processes in-house for the Rex stuff, it would have been a lot more expensive. We actually own a lot of the printing equipment and it's in our building. And we're able to do a lot of the packaging ourselves. But if I, if I would have contract with the vendor, the Rex packaging would have been probably close to $20. My cost, I can tell you that his cost on this is multiple times that. It's probably approximating $100. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. It's incredibly impressive what he put together there. No one's done that. The closest I could think of would be Raw Shaving, which is out of business now. Uh, Raw Shaving had some pretty elaborate packaging as well. Let's give it a first stroke, guys. Here's the $1,000 stroke. <laughs> wow, it made my coffee for me too. Now, truth be told, I did have a little cut here yesterday on my, on my cheek. So if you see a little blood come from my cheek, it's not the razor. It's a, it is a previous wound. It has a slight amount of blade feel, but it's actually really nice. Very smooth. It sounds fantastic. It, it, I'm not gonna lie, it's better. It's a better sound than my Rex Razors, and I love the way my Rex Razors sound. This sounds like a little engine. Yes, people, I can, I can tell you that it's better than something I've done. I, I, I'm, I guess I'm really impressed by this guy because he took a very um, bravado step and just came out with something top of the market. He wasn't even caring about uh, – he was he – was, I'm trying to put into words because I'm actually really blown away. Manuel took a vision he had as a creator and said, I'm not going to let my vision be compromised by any preconceived notions. I'm not going to let um, outside influences decide what this is going to be. My creation is going gonna, is gonna to breathe you know, into existence and, and, and come to existence and, be, and, and have a life of its own and price be damned. And there will be a buyer. And I, I guess I, I really admire that because... So many times, we as manufacturers, as creators, we're, we're creative and we're trying to think creative, but then we always have a constraint. We're always thinking, oh, but the customer wouldn't buy that. It's too expensive. Like right now, I'm trying to produce a, a Rex Butterfly Razor and we're running into cost concerns. And something like this really encourages me that it doesn't matter. In some sense. Now, I'm not saying everyone can afford a $1,000 razor. I'm not bragging that I can. Truth be told, uh, I'm probably, I may sell this. I, I may hold on to it. He only made 100. I have number 12. Um, who knows? If he doesn't make any more, it may go up a lot in value. In you know, five or 10 years from now, it may be worth a lot more. Look at the Trader Ray razors. I know Shane from Blackland redid them. But man, those Trader Ray razors were crazy. They would go for $500, $600 just because they were out of production and only a certain amount were made. Um, let's get back to the shave though. It's shaving very nice, very smooth, efficient. I would say it reminds me of my Envoy. It reminds me of the Rex Envoy. It's maybe a little bit more aggressive than the Envoy, uh, but not much. I probably feel a little bit more blade than the Envoy, but um, it is, I would say it's a little smoother. So it's like, it's more aggressive, like you feel more blade, and it's getting more done. Yeah. But it is very nice. The handle feels great. 
handle has great grip. I, I may sell it. I may hold on to it. I may throw it in the lobby for other customers to see who come to our shop. I bought this to do the video and to see what someone else who's doing this does. Because to me, it's so easy to look at people making $50, $70, $100 razors. That's like, that's just everywhere. No one else is doing this. And I always like things that no one else is doing. That's, that's kind of like just, it, as a creator, that's the ultimate thing is to say, I'm not concerned about what the haters are going to say, what people are going to complain, say, I'm going to do what I want to do. And I respect that. may do a slight clean up here, but let's rinse off some of this. Yeah, most of the comments on my, so I put a single picture yesterday on Wet Shaving Society, a Facebook group, and the vast majority of people are saying it's ridiculous, and how could anyone, you know, you know, that's ridiculous. There's no razor that's worth that. It's not going to shave any different than a $50 razor. Um... I would say to you that not everyone buys razors for shaving. <laughs> I know it's ridiculous, uh, but it's not actually not any more ridiculous than someone who buys a high-end car and puts it in their garage and just goes out and looks at it. It's like that, uh, you guys seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off and um, Ferris's best friend, I forgot his name, his dad had that, what was it, a Ferrari California? It was like a 1963 Ferrari California uh, car, and it was in that garage, you know. And, um, you know, the, the friend said that his dad just looks at it. The dad doesn't touch it. No one can drive it. And then Ferris took it out for a spin. That's what this feels like. Um, I, 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 I will say, this is a near BBS, very smooth, clean, comfortable shave, one pass. Haters make you famous, and this guy, I guess Manuel, is a little discouraged. He's he's got a lot of hate, and uh, he said, "I don't really know if I'm going to make any more. This is it. It's going to be a hundred. Obviously, this isn't his day his day job. He has a day job. He is a hobbyist who uh, got super inspired and worked, you know, with a machine shop and a finishing department or whatever to produce this, and it's gorgeous." Uh, I don't think he needs to apologize. Making something expensive, you don't need to send, sell 10,000. He's not, he's not the Henson model. The Henson guys are selling those razors at 70 bucks made in aluminum, and they're selling thousands. This guy, I guess he said opening day, he sold 18. So opening day, he, sold, he, he, you know, he had $18,000 of revenue, first day. That's not bad for your first day. <laughs> now that's not profit. But I could, I could tell you, if he's making this in Switzerland, just put a little aftershave splash on. If he's making this in Switzerland and uh, he's, he's spending this much on packaging, I, and the materials are 316L, which is the highest grade of marine grade, seeing the steel, um, he's probably got, with the stand and the polishing work, my guess, I'm just being super transparent with you, my guess is he may have up to... $200 in the manufacturing of this. His cost, that, that'd be just my wild guess between the stand and, 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 the, and, the, and all the finishing, the laser, all that. And then you add this, maybe he's tripling his investment, maybe he's quadrupling his investment, which is not unheard of for manufacturing. Um, that, that, that's probably less than what your average car manufacturer does from the, from the price it costs to produce a, a Ford F-150 truck and the, and the retail price. They're probably quadrupling their investment. But I don't think he needs to make any apologies. I'm not going to make any apologies for him. It's beautifully finished. It's beautifully presented. It has a fantastic presentation. I can't say anything bad about it. It's $849. If you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. Uh, in fact, you may not be able to buy it. I, I bet that in the next two or three months, these will be gone and you'll be either in the club that has one or not. And I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that I respect him for taking a stand and seeing a vision. He got super inspired by Formula One racing cars and he did something. Any one of you guys out there can do that. You guys are super big enthusiasts in wet shaving. 
Go, go to a machine shop. Draw and sketch your favorite design and see what it takes to make something. Um, I guess I have a lot of respect for people that do things. I, I have respect for makers, people that, that, that take a risk. I guarantee you his investment with the machine shop was probably six figures. You're going to go talk to a machine shop and make 100 of these. He may have had to uh, write a check for 50000 or 75000 or $100,000. I don't know what it took to – because there, there's, there's, there's tooling involved. There's, there's uh, fixtures involved. There's costs. You know, He may have had to do a bigger run than 100 of these. He may have had to do 500 to get even a good price. You know, sometimes packaging manufacturers, they don't want to do small runs of things. So his packaging cost could have been super high. But either way, I, I think it's really unique. He did something. And as a collector of razors, this is going to be my collection. I have decided as, as I'm talking myself into it, uh, it's going to go in my collection because I think in 10 years you won't see this ever again. And I think it'll be one of those things like a blip on the radar like, oh, man, did you get one of those? Yeah, they were, they were incredible. Um, is it... Is it a different shave uh, than, you know, a $50 or $100 razor? I don't know. I've shaved with some great razors that are $50 or $100. Bucks. I bet you can get a great shave. But that's not why we buy. Just like going back to that Ferris Bueller's Day Off video. Sometimes you like to go out in the garage and run your hand along that Ferrari California edition. Sometimes you want to see something of this beauty in your bathroom every day. And what's that worth? And one more point, I just want to say this. I know I'm on my soapbox today, I'm ranting, but I am fired up. The guys who buy 20 shaving soaps a year, or 50 different splashes a year, or 30 different brushes, you're spending the same amount of money. You're spending the $1,000. You're just doing it in slower increments. And you're doing it in little bite-sized pieces. It doesn't feel like $1,000. But if you add it up, what you spend in wet shaving for the year, I guarantee it's $1,000. And this guy decided to say, I'm grabbing all of that, and I'm going to have a forever product. This is an heirloom quality product that will never deteriorate. If you take care of it, it's going to be on your counter for the rest of your life. Your kids will fight over this. And speaking of fighting, I want to hear what you guys have to say with my rant today. Um, Tatalus, Velocity One, what do you think? Is it ridiculous? Should this razor make you coffee in the morning and tell you the weather report while you're shaving? You know, what is he thinking? This is absurd. He can't charge what he wants. Tell me in the comments. If you do leave a comment, you're entered into in this, the official Razor Emporium black and blue t-shirt. Uh, please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to our channel. Share it with someone who wants to join you in the hate or love of this product. And we will see you next time at Razor and Point for all things vintage shaving. Thanks, guys.